In tonight's cover story, a two-hour trip from Chicago can take you across the Wisconsin border and back in time. There's a piece of century-old transportation history from the Windy City, still riding the rails. Yeah, you may know East Troy, Wisconsin is the home of Alpine Valley, the main attraction, but we sent WGN's Mike Lowe to see the village's train attraction. East Troy, Wisconsin is 100 miles. We're only 10, maybe 15 minutes north of Lake Geneva, so as a result, we get a lot of people coming in, from Chicago people coming in from there. And what feels like 100 years from Chicago. It's almost like stepping back in time. A visit to the village of 4,687 people is almost like turning back the clock a full century to the kind of small town where vintage cars don't seem out of place and kids still ride their bikes down the middle of the street to buy penny candy inside of an authentic turn-of-the-century ice cream parlor. So that when they walk in the door, it's just as if they were walking in the door in the 1930s. It's also one of the last places you'll find a railroad conductor All aboard! echoing the same plea to passengers that was heard in 1907 when rail cars first rolled through here 117 years ago. This is the East Troy Railroad Museum, a transportation time capsule featuring the streetcars of Milwaukee. So we have over 30 pieces of historic equipment. Average age is somewhere in that 80 to 100 years old. And they're all electric, which is what makes this really unique. We're actually the last little piece of a 385 mile interurban network in the state of Wisconsin. Way before the interstate existed, you rode the train. And so in 1907, this railroad came out and we're still operating on the original overhead wire and track. The museum showcases a train station that was once a substation. Originally, this brought electricity into the town. Before this railroad came out, there just wasn't any electricity here. So not only did this building power the railroad, but also all of the town itself. But behind these barn doors. So we have about 30 cars, about 19 of them are in operation. There's at least 15 in this barn right now. We have three Chicago CTA cars. Chicago transportation history still lives on the lines. After the mid-70s, they went to several different museums. When we ended up getting them, we restored them. We've repainted them, and they are working fabulous. We use them for a lot of our charters and a lot of our uh, weekend rides. This century-old CTA L car, dubbed the Evanston Express, was used from 1924 to the mid-1970s. And now the 52-seat restored rail car rides the Wisconsin countryside. There are 30 trolleys in rotation, including a number of 1920s South Shore Line cars that ran from Chicago to Gary, and the museum's central showpiece. And our pride and joy in the back is car uh, 26 out of Sheboygan. Interurban Car 26, a pristine example of Wisconsin's wooden cars. It's a piece of property on the National Register of Historic Places. We offer rides between East Troy and Maguanago. Uh, so if you wanted to come out on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and just go through the countryside, we offer that. But really popular are dining experiences. The dining experience offers white tablecloth service with Wisconsin scenery. While we're in motion, I ask you to remain in your seats. I see families come here and I see the look on the kids' faces as the train whistle blows or the compressor starts. Their faces just light up, and, and that's really what makes it for me. Directly across the tracks and under the striped awning is Jay Lauber's old-fashioned ice cream parlor. Initially, the trolley museum brought people to me, and now I think I'm bringing people to the trolley museum. John Lauber, one of the train museum's board members, designed the shop to resemble a drugstore. What I was trying, attempting to recreate is a truly authentic 1920s, 1930s drugstore. 
He's now celebrating 50 years in business. Puff the magic dragon. A vintage jukebox plays the hits from history, and a cash register rings with recollections. Lauber serves 24 flavors of milkshakes and malteds. The parlor boasts a four-page menu of sundaes, all served in turn-of-the-century dishes. It's glass, everybody gets whipped cream, nuts, and a cherry. They also have a small wafer cookie that we've been using for, for 40 some years, and that's not something you get other places. It really is a place that people come to remember, remember the times past. It's a special family time. Renee Kellingbar was one of the original employees, known as a Lauber lady. This is the apron that I wore when I worked here um, 50, close to 50 years ago. And the spot is a sort of living museum too. The shelves are stocked with nostalgic brands, from Morton's Salt to Horlick's Malt. Well, most people are, are pretty, pretty surprised. They, you know, they look at this, you know, it's, this is really old. Jay Lauber's is a sweet reward for those who board a train. I think that's as far as we're gonna go. Looking to remember a place that time forgot, 100 miles from Chicago. My attempt has always been is to give people an authentic trip back in the past not some kind of a fake, phony thing. Mike Lowe, WGN News. Old world fun. The East Troy Rail Lines operated mostly by volunteers. And fall is a popular time to ride the train and see the autumn colors. There's a special Harvest Fest schedule that's running from now until October 27th. For prices and directions, you can visit our website, wgntv.com.